Coming up on your weekly pitch, meat grown in labs instead of from dead animals could soon be on your dinner plate. Plus, 5G is coming, and many are raising concerns about the potential health risks of the technology, and how the companies behind those home DNA tests are profiting off your genetic code. Straight from our pitch meeting, right to your favorite screens. Your weekly pitch dives deeper, giving you the context to understand how today's biggest stories affect your life. Hey everyone, I'm Jessica Sikmanen, and this is your weekly pitch. Before we get to those stories, here's a look at what went down this week. A variety of the cannabis plant is about to become legal in the U.S. For the first time ever, farmers will be able to harvest hemp. It comes after lawmakers passed the U.S. Farm Bill this week, which included a measure that distinguished the hemp plant from marijuana. Unlike marijuana, hemp has a very low level of THC, the psychoactive chemical that causes people to get high. Hemp is known for a high level of CBD, which many believe has therapeutic effects. The president is expected to sign the bill into law, which experts say will allow the growing CBD industry to blossom. Fans of the hit game show app HQ Trivia are mourning the death of its founder and CEO. Police say 34-year-old Colin Kroll was found dead Sunday morning in his New York apartment. He earned a big name in the tech world after co-founding the video looping app Vine in 2012, which shut down four years later. Kroll's business partner Russ Yusupov tweeted, It's with great sadness that we say goodbye. Couture fashion brand Prada is in hot water after some called a window display in its Manhattan storefront racist. Prada took down the display after a Facebook post showing monkey-like figures with black faces and red lips went viral. In a statement, the company called the figures imaginary creatures and said they were not intended to be offensive. Merriam-Webster's word of the year is justice. According to the company, the word was searched 74% more in 2018 than 2017. They credit that to numerous national debates that took place over the last year, including racial justice, social justice, and economic justice. Miriam Webster also credits coverage of news events like the Mueller probe and the confirmation hearings of Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh to the spike. And Virgin Galactic is one step closer to sending tourists into space. The company's supersonic plane journeyed into the upper levels of Earth's atmosphere this week, reaching space for the first time at a maximum altitude of 51.4 miles. That's about a mile and a half past what the U.S. government considers the edge of space. This flight means Virgin Galactic could be just months away from taking its first tourists into space. The company says about 600 people have reserved tickets, starting at $200,000. Here's what else came out of our pitch meetings this week. Meat grown in labs instead of from dead animals could soon be on your dinner plate. If that doesn't sound appetizing, you should know lab-grown meat is the hottest debate in the food industry right now, and experts say it could be the future. They argue it's cheaper, faster, and more ethical than raising livestock and poultry. Lab-grown meat, or clean meat as some call it, wouldn't require slaughtering millions of animals every year. Some say growing meat in labs will lower greenhouse gas emissions. It's no secret that the world's population is growing at an exponential pace. Billionaires like Bill Gates have said there's no way we can feed the population of the future using traditional methods, which is why he and meat corporations like Tyson are investing big time in lab-grown meat. It's an exploding industry, and leaders say you could see it on grocery store shelves within the next three years. So how exactly do you grow meat in a lab? It works by taking stem cells from animals like cows and chickens. They're cultured in a lab and eventually multiply until they're grown into a chunk of meat. Foods like chicken strips, hamburgers, and even duck foie gras have been developed by these lab meat startups. Those who tried it say it's a little more bland than traditional meat, but supporters say that's a fair trade-off for the benefits. Not everyone is optimistic about the change. The state of Missouri passed a law earlier this year making it illegal to call it meat if it's not from a dead animal. Detractors swiftly fired back with a lawsuit. They argued the law discriminates against companies that develop meat alternatives. Turns out, it's not just our land-raised meats that are raising environmental concerns. According to a report published in Scientific Reports, discarded fishing nets make up 46% of the 79,000 tons of trash floating in the Pacific Ocean. The majority of the rest of it is composed of other types of fishing industry gear like ropes, eel traps, and baskets. 
Believe it or not, a 24-year-old came up with an idea of how to clean up what's called the Great Pacific Garbage Patch and then raised millions of dollars to make it happen. It looks like a giant pipe and it's heading to the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. The initiative is called the Ocean Cleanup Project and it was started by 24-year-old Boyan Slat when he was just 16 years old. In September, it finally launched. If it works, it'll take a bite out of the garbage patch and bring it back to land to be recycled. The garbage patch is a huge collection of floating trash drifting between Hawaii and California. It's twice the size of Texas and contains 80,000 metric tons of plastic, according to Slat. You might wonder why we can't just scoop up all the debris, but the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration says the garbage patch is just too big. It's constantly moving with ocean currents, and the debris starts at the surface and stretches all the way to the sea floor. The ocean cleanup project could be the solution. It curves into a U-shape corralling the plastic at the surface, allowing fish to swim underneath. Noah says the ultimate solution to stopping plastic pollution is prevention. One simple solution that's been trending on social media recently is the hashtag stop sucking movement. By now you've probably heard a lot of companies are ditching plastic straws for good. Starbucks, Ikea, Alaska Airlines, SeaWorld, and a bunch of others are banning straws. So how did we go from reaching for straws at almost every restaurant in America to citywide bans in some parts of the country? Well, environmental activists have been pushing for it for years, but recently, social media activism kicked the movement into high gear. Celebrities like quarterback Tom Brady and actor Adrian Grenier are vocal supporters and helped raise awareness. And it looks like it worked. But how much damage do these little plastic straws actually do? Scientists say a lot. Just like any other one-time use item, we throw away a lot of straws. According to EcoCycle, about 500 million every day just in the US. Scientists say straws are made of a thin type of plastic that break down into microplastics. Some fish eat that microplastic and we eat those fish, so it could end up in our bodies, which could lead to health problems. Activists say there are some disadvantages to the final plastic straw movement. A lot of people with disabilities can't drink unless they have a straw. Some activists say restaurants should still keep a few straws on hand for possible exceptions like this one. There are some alternatives for people ready to stop sucking. You could buy a reusable straw made out of plastic or metal. Some restaurants will also offer compostable straws and old-fashioned paper straws. And don't forget edible straws like cookie straws or even pasta straws. All right, so straws are one thing, but another group of people are taking their trash to a whole new level, reevaluating everything that's in their garbage can. It's called the zero waste movement. The goal is for each person to send basically nothing to the landfill each year. A common visual associated with the movement is a mason jar filled with trash. For the most successful zero wasters, that's the amount of garbage they send to the landfill every year. Supporters of the movement say the amount of trash the U.S. tosses out is alarming. According to the Environmental Protection Agency, the U.S. sent more than 136 million tons of waste to landfills in 2015. You might not think about it, but some of the things that end up there will stick around way longer than you will. For example, the National Park Service says aluminum cans can take up to 200 years to decompose. Plastic water bottles take 450 years and glass takes 1 million years. The goal for zero wasters is to compost and recycle way more so less trash goes to landfills. According to Google Trends, interest in the zero waste movement has been steadily growing over the past 10 years. Some big companies are committing to cutting their waste. For example, Subaru made headlines in 2017 for transforming its automotive plant in Indiana to the country's first zero landfill factory. All their packaging material for car parts is recyclable or reusable. While 100% zero waste is too extreme for many, supporters share advice on Instagram and blogs for anyone who wants to get involved. Here are some tips to get started. Follow the mantra, refuse, reduce, reuse, recycle, and rot. Refuse paper receipts at stores and instead opt for digital receipts. Take some reusable tote bags with you the next time you go grocery shopping. And when you must use disposable plates, look for ones that are compostable. They'll rot much more quickly than plastic or styrofoam. You might feel good about recycling most of the cardboard and plastic that makes its way into your home. But do you know that one piece of incorrectly discarded trash could send entire batches of perfectly good recyclables to a landfill instead? Bad recycling habits actually do more harm than good. Maybe you've done it. 
tossed a pizza box or a plastic bag into the recycling bin. But it turns out a lot of items can contaminate entire batches of recyclables. Waste managers say if you're putting things into the recycling bin out of hope, you might be a wishful recycler. Well now, communities all over the country are cracking down on those bad habits because of a big change in China. China is one of the U.S.'s biggest buyers of recycling, but they're no longer accepting shipments that are more than 0.5% contaminated, which means your stray takeout container might ruin everything. Here's a few of the most misrecycled products. Waste managers say greasy pizza boxes are one of the most common offenders. A little bit of grease is okay, but if it seeps through the cardboard, toss it in the trash or compost bin. You can also tear off the top of pizza boxes and recycle it if it's clean. Same goes for oily takeout containers. Make sure you wash out any food residue from them before recycling. Lastly, plastic bags. You might put your recyclables in a bag for convenience sake, but waste managers say they can seriously clog up and damage machinery at their facilities. Check to see if your city has a special plastic bag drop-off area instead. Keep in mind that recycling guidelines can vary pretty dramatically between communities. The best way to find out the rules for your area is to get in touch with your public works department. Next on your weekly pitch, one major US car maker wants to help you make some extra cash by letting strangers drive your car. Plus, tech companies say 5G is about to change our daily lives in a whole lot of ways.